Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm so excited to bring you this very special episode of the Inside Out Health Podcast with Anahata Ananda. Now, this was the first episode that I have ever filmed in person in a podcast interview. So if you want to catch us on YouTube, we are actually out on Anahata's back deck overlooking beautiful Sedona, Arizona, doing this interview. Um, so so who is Anahata Ananda? Um, I actually heard her on the Aubrey Marcus podcast a couple of years ago, and I was so blown away by this woman that I actually listened to her episode as soon as I finished. I just repeated it. I was like, this woman is incredible. Um, so it was so awesome to be able now, two years later, go to her home in Sedona and do a healing session with her. Um, her company is called Shamangelic Healing. So she's both a high performance coach and a shamanic healer and soul guide. And she, she had, does all sorts of things from masculine, feminine energy work to, um, breath work to coaching, um, um, she has inspirational workshops, uh, group retreats, online courses, and of course, that signature healing session that I did with her that was so wonderful. So we did that session, and then I came back a couple of days later, and we recorded this podcast. Um, her insights are so good. You guys are in such a tree. I find this to be perfect timing releasing this episode with all the craziness that's going on in the world. She brings it right back to center, reconnects to our hearts, and that really gives some great insights on how to navigate these times, um, and also just how to... How how to go through transformation. She's been through it herself. And this is what she does all day. Every day is coaching people through beautiful spiritual transformation. So, um, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Oh, before we do, sorry, she's going to mention some free gifts for you guys. So those are going to be in the show notes, both on whatever podcast platform you're listening on and also on YouTube. So make sure you, you have to go through that link that she sent, um, to get the gifts that she's talking about later on in the episode. So just make sure you watch out for that. Okay. We'll go ahead and get into it here. Here is Anahata Ananda. Hey guys, I'm here with Anahata Ananda of Shamangelic Healing. We're actually here at her home in Sedona, Arizona. Mm. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home, into your space. We did a healing session yesterday for myself. It was so beautiful. Mm. And so I'm excited today to have her share her beautiful heart and soul and wisdom with you guys. Um, so Anahata, welcome. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> as soon as you walked in the door, I was like, oh, kindred sister for yeah. sure. And, you know, thank you for coming here to do your own work, coming to Sedona to just take a break, step away from busy life mm -hmm. and, and, and pause and get your own support for your own journey and mm -hmm. release density, remember who you are, reclaim your center so that you can, you know, really serve with the mm -hmm. most clarity and the most um, passion in your life. So it's been an yeah. honor. Our yeah. session yesterday was so beautiful. <laughs> it was. And thank you for saying that. I, I love that because this, when I came here, the energy of this place is so special. Yeah. I, I, you're a high performance coach. I saw too. And on top of it, all of your experience with healing work. And I noticed when I came here, the energy, it kind of just like causes you to pause a little bit, yeah. causes you to just meditate and stay in the moment. And I was wondering if you could speak about Sedona because you've been doing retreats here for 18 years <laughs> yeah, right. and you live here. And I know Sedona is becoming this hot spot of, you know, people are they're feeling that. I came here. I was like, oh, I feel that. I want to do some work here. I want to meditate. I want to be in silence here. Um, could you speak about the vortex energies and the energy of Sedona and just about Sedona in general? Yeah. Sedona is, is uh, a a, a spiritual center. The energy of the land here is different than it is in other places. Mm -hmm. That's why people are called here. So the vortexes are these spiraling energy currents that are coming out of the Earth's crust and they're an amplifier. So if you're coming here to do healing, it's going to amplify and accelerate your healing. If you're coming here for spiritual connection, it's going to amplify that. If you are coming here to write and create, it's going to amplify that. It's an amplifier, mm -hmm. positively or negatively. Because if there's something that's not in alignment, Sedona's going to apply a little pressure there to invite you to look at the shadow or the mm -hmm. crack in your foundation or whatever's blocking your healing, your empowerment, your purpose, your spiritual connection. And so she, Sedona, is this beautiful facilitator of healing and awakening. And this is mm -hmm. why shamangelic healing is based here is because i have her having my back and keeping me on a tightrope of my own integrity to 
stay on my journey and so that I can support others through the process as well. And so it is a destination to just step away from everything. Mm -hmm. And this is a wonderful place to get quiet, to go be on the land, to do your own healing work, to connect to your spiritual guidance, connect to your soul's wisdom, to your heart's uh, internal knowing. Because we get off path, we forget, we get lost, we get busy. And it's so necessary to just take a pause mm -hmm. from time to time and just, hey, where am I going? What am I doing? And am I, am I, am I going after the right summit? Totally. You know, a lot of times we're hustling, you know, just trying to get to the summit in life, realizing, wait, I, I'm on the wrong summit. Yeah. I made it. <laughs> I achieved. I've arrived. Or I'm on my way and I'm hustling and I'm, you know, competing with everybody else on, you know, to get yeah. to that summit and realizing, am I on the right path? Yeah. Am I doing this for the right reason? Mm -hmm. Am I getting fulfilled and nurtured along the way? And these are great questions to pause so that we're finding our summit. Yeah. And we're doing it for the right reason. Wow. And we're nourishing our soul along the way. Mm -hmm. I've been feeling that since I've been here. I like, I'm like, mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. She says the truth because there's been little things like I, you know, I do the Instagram influencing and I'm, I'm looking at my normal routine and the normal things I do and I'm just like, hmm. I'm taking a good look at them. I'm like, wow. Like just getting outside of that that place, but it's different. It's not just like going on vacation to the beach. Like it's different. It's, it really is, has been like pulling me inside of myself and really having me examine and, and honestly tapping into more of my feminine side. I've been feeling that just energetically, that just where my mind is going, where my thoughts are going, re-examining my patterns and behaviors. It's been pulling me into that more. Yeah. Um, and so I know that's a big part of your work yeah. is talking about masculine and feminine energies. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? That I've just, even just coming here, I'm experiencing yeah. that. Yeah. <clears throat> this is where each of us are being called to a couple different ways is to look at where we are in any way in the toxic feminine. Mm. Victim, mm. fear, uh, drama, mm. uh, emotional overwhelm, insecurity, any of those things where we're really not in our power in the feminine, where we're blocking our intuition. And this is for men and women. Mm -hmm. You know, it, the feminine where we may be blocking our sensitivity. Our, our emotions and our senses have intelligence. They have messages. And... If we're going to be on our soul's mission and our soul's purpose, mm -hmm. our feminine, the sacred feminine, is going to need to rise where we honor our intuition, where we, where we look at our emotions and, and query them instead of oppress them, understand, mm -hmm. why am I angry? Why am I sad? What is this trying to show me? Especially as things are shifting so quickly and so rapidly, if we're not in that feminine space of listening and awareness, we'll miss the clues of turn right, stop, change something, uh, time to let go of something, time to leap forward. And the feminine is our GPS. She's going to be the one that says, pause, leap, learn, rest. And if, we're, if we don't have her on board, we're going to be in the tumbler cycle for sure of, of, of going on the wrong path or staying on it too long mm -hmm. um, and missing all of these clues that are the clues to, for us to get back on the right path and how to adjust and navigate the changes as we're on the path. Because as, as we've noticed with the last few months, there's been a lot of changes and pivots and flexibility and adapt, you know, being adaptive and listening and honoring and awareness is, is all the healthy, conscious, sacred feminine. Mm. <clears throat> and what am I here to birth? Mm. What am I here to birth? And listening to that. You know, and then, of course, there's the masculine, which we can get into as well. Question on this, on this feminine and being pulled on the right path. I know, you know, I've noticed a lot of people, they're like, I know something's wrong in my life. Like, I know I'm unhappy in this relationship and I probably should get out of it, but it's really safe. And, or I know that I don't want to, like, be stuck in this job anymore and it's sucking the soul out of me and I hate yeah. it, but I don't know what else to do because I make pretty good money and I'm scared. Like, what? But they feel this pull. Yeah. They feel this pull. What would you say to somebody in that situation. I, lo I love that question and I have a lot of clients come in here every day that are exactly in that. Mm -hmm. And it's this is why we pause and step away cuz it's hard to make the decision when we're in it. Yeah. We need to step back and this is where the the feminine part of spiritual connection 
that says, I need to pause, I need to stop, I need to listen, I need to get quiet. This is the being side of things. Mm. The doing side is going to be the masculine, but if we don't lean into the feminine first, we don't know which way to go. Mm -hmm. And we can leap out of one unhealthy relationship into another. We can shift from a job career, you know, that isn't really ours and just reach and out of fear, jump into another one that's not aligned either. And we find <laughs> yeah. ourselves in the pattern over and over yeah. and over again, repeating, repeating, repeating. And so this is where the pause of the feminine is like, well, what isn't aligned about this? What am I learning? What doesn't feel right? Where am I pissed? Where am I, where am I angry? Where do I not feel nourished? Because those are the clues and the keys that we want to bring into our next choice. Well, I know it needs to be um, where I'm feeling valued and respected. Okay, well, in your job, in your career, in your relationships, if you're not feeling that, then it's, I'm not respecting myself. It's not that my boss needs to respect me. I need to respect me. They don't have to change. If they, if, if they want to, they can. But if they don't, it doesn't mean I have to stay in that relationship or that career. It's mm. like, well, what are my values? What are my ethics? What are my priorities? And if I don't ask that, somebody else is deciding that for me. Yep. In relationship, in career, my health, my dreams, if I don't listen deeply to who I am, what's important to me, what are my dreams? What are my passions? Somebody else is deciding that for me. So oh, it's, right. it's getting it back into the driver's seat of our life. And mm. when, the, when we sit still and the feminine in that feminine space and we start to get those clues, then we're going to pass it over to the masculine mm. because he's going to be the one, mm -hmm. ma male or female, he's going to be the one that takes courageous action. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to say no to this relationship. Well, I'm going to start researching other careers. I'm going to take this training I've always wanted to blank. Mm -hmm. I've been so excited to, but never had the courage. So now we're moving out of the unhealthy masculine, which is driven by fear or ego, um, who is a bully or a coward. Uh, this is I win, you lose, rather than win, win, win. Mm -hmm. The healthy masculine is courageous, confident, and, I, and, I, and not from an arrogant place, but just from a place of truth. Right. And he's not afraid to be seen. A lot of us don't make the moves into who we are because we're afraid of judgment, we're afear, afraid of rejection. What will people think of me? And the spiritual warrior, the divine masculine, gives it zero Fs about <laughs> you know, what everybody else thinks. Right because he knows who he is and this is his path. That doesn't mean he's always masterful in the movements because mm. we're gonna be going down new paths that we've never gone to before. And so in the, in the masculine, in the conscious masculine, there is a humility that says, I'm, I'm new at this, but I am I'm confident that every step I take will be a learning step. Mm -hmm. And if I fall, then I'll look at what I tripped over, I'll get back up and I'll try it again. And so there is a, a level of resilience and persistence and commitment and loyalty that the divine masculine embodies. Because if we're moving out of a career that we've been doing for 10, 15, 20 years and we're moving into the unknown, it's not going to be perfect or graceful or, no. you know, it's going to be messy. Just like on this podcast, you know, you, you, you were called at some point as I, as I was, you know, to start yep. a podcast. Yep. Like, yep. I don't know what I'm doing. No. <laughs> we were I'm, discussing how technologically savvy neither of like, us are, like, but I we don't figured know, this out together. But <laughs> I'm going to try. Totally. I'm going to mess up. And in front of any, everyone, yeah. I, it won't be graceful. And yet, with it, when there's humility and says, mm -hmm. you know, at least I'm putting myself in the arena of life. Mm -hmm. I, at least mm -hmm. I'm putting myself out there going for my dreams. Mm -hmm. and, and that humble masculine is also, that sacred masculine stands for truth and in integrity. And oh, and leadership. And oh, do we need men and women that are leading from a place of integrity. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of leaders that are not really bringing harmony to community and uh, bringing people together in, in, in such a way that is standing for truth. Mm -hmm. and, and in the face of greed, 
and, and standing for the planet. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this yesterday and core healing for humanity mm -hmm. instead of just bullying and bypassing and dividing, right. dividing the tribe. But we need leaders that unite the tribe. And if you're watching and listening, that means you have a tool, a resource, a service, a product, a vision, a platform that can help in that process mm -hmm. of uniting the tribe, healing the tribe, a tool, a resource to help us live more sustainably, live more health, you know, in our health and vitality, in better relationships, whatever, you know, with music, with dance, with yoga, with your, with your writing, whatever it is, with your teaching, with your parenting, you have tools and resources. Mm -hmm. And you got to get out of that fear that I don't, or that, oh, no, not me. Oh, absolutely you. You are the one we've been waiting for. Totally. And so that means stepping into that, that divine masculine is stepping into the courageous part of our life that says, I do have something to offer. Mm -hmm. And I'm willing to learn, try, get back up again and put myself out there and face the consequences and be stronger and better for it. And in doing so, you'll be inspiring others that it's possible to mm -hmm. reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, both of us have been mm -hmm. through what I call a marital liberation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I usually say congratulations. It's you not know? an easy thing to go through, but it is a yeah. rebirth. And I, and speaking of rebirth, I love what you're saying because I've had so many people say, they're like, Tara, I love how you, like, you have this sense of purpose and mission and you're, like, going after it. But, like, I just don't feel that. Like, I don't, I don't feel, like called anything or and I what I'm hearing is maybe possibly if that's you you're like you're listening maybe it's because you're not creating that pause because I'm hearing that this this courage and confidence just like I was called to do this podcast it made zero sense I'm like I have a bunch of other stuff I have to do and I don't know how to do a podcast and and it was like <laughs> you're doing a podcast I'm like okay I'm doing a podcast and that was birthed out of the pause birthed out of 100%. the feminine and it, it's tapping in and, and, and meditating. And that's what I want to ask you next is like, you know, maybe if you're not feeling this sense of alignment, possibly it's because you're not taking the time to pause because in that pause for me is where all the confidence is born. It's birthed there because I'm getting these messages from, from what, whatever you believe in, whether it's just your higher self or the universe or God or whatever that is to you that you know that voice. I know you know that voice where it's like, do this. This is the <laughs> way to go. So whatever that is, just intuition that it only can be discovered because it's so quiet and it's so easy to ignore and trample over in your, I guess, toxic masculine where you're just go, 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 fear, have to, have to, scarcity, got to do it, got to make it, got to make money, got to be loved, <laughs> all those things. Like, what would you say to somebody who's like, well, that's cool. I would love to go to Sedona. I live in Kuwait or whatever. I'm probably not going to go to Sedona anytime right. soon. Or maybe you just live in Phoenix and you're not going to right. Sedona anytime soon. How do you re recommend people create that pause so they can birth that confidence? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's why this whole, uh, this whole pandemic has invited me to do more virtual things, mm. more virtual offerings. Speaking of a pause, yes, the pandemic was a pause. Right, a big one, a <laughs> forced look what pause. Was birth, right? A forced Sometimes pause. Sometimes they for get forced. And in that pause, we can run, hide, sedate, ignore, distract, and blame. Instead mm. of go in, feel, be accountable, listen, trust, mm -hmm. um, be still, heal. Mm. And so in the pause, we can be so uncomfortable with that pause because it's so unfamiliar or maybe not as practiced mm -hmm. that we're like, okay, I don't, I don't really know what to do here. So I'm just going to reach for my phone. Right. I'm just going to, um, you know, turn on Netflix or distract myself. Mm -hmm. And this is the invitation to go inward. And if you're going to find your soul's mission, you will have to be in alignment with some spiritual practice, some daily practice that allows you to pause. Um, because that's where inspiration, mm -hmm. inspiration, if we break it down, inspiritos just means to bring spirit in, mm. to be inspired. Wow. Love it. And so this is where, like you said, hey, in that stillness, I receive courage. We might also receive healing. We might also receive a vision mm -hmm. or 
a an idea. Oh my gosh, I need to write about this. Oh my gosh, you know what? I want to learn this thing. And so that's where, you know, that's in that pause in the feminine, she is in that space where she is deeply receptive to divine guidance. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just peace, healing, courage, strength, um, and grace. The qualities that we need to embody for who we're becoming, we may need to be courageous. Mm -hmm. We may, may need to really have to, um, s you know, develop a, a deeper level of confidence to be able to trust our intuition, even if other people are doubting or hating, yep. and they may be your, your close circle of influence that yep. say, well, who do you think you are mm -hmm. to step out? Who do you think you are to divorce? Who do you think you are to leave yeah. this good paying job to do that weird, stupid thing? And it's like, yeah, but it's my soul's mission, so I'm not going to abandon that. Right. So we're going to be facing, in that stillness, we're also going to be facing self-abandonment, -ab where we've where we've leaned on other people's uh, validation to define us. So we're gonna be moving through all of those layers that are keeping us from our greatness mm -hmm. at the same time. So it can't help but, being, but be a, uh, a healing journey as well right. to uncover everything we've forgotten, everything we've abandoned, everything that we bartered mm -hmm. to fit in, to mm -hmm. be successful, to be liked. And so this is a journey of reclamation. It's a journey of remembering. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the work that I do with, you know, with, with women, and this is for men too, of just like remembering who we are mm -hmm. before we were told how to be, before we were told how to act, before we were told to abandon our intuition for external validation, before we were told, you know, what is success mm -hmm. and what is beauty and what is courage and, and we're actually peeling back all of the layers of what is false, what is not me, what is not mine, and we're reclaiming and remembering who we are at a core level because that's who we're going to need to be and remember when we're walking forward in our path mm. and in our truth. We mm. can't walk without that part of us hand in hand, and we can't really walk forward you know with that and that's our inner child and our mm -hmm. our, our like core essence mm -hmm. but it's also who uh, our spiritual higher self our spiritual guidance we're also going to be walking hand in hand with that guidance of who we're becoming our our fullest expression our highest potential mm -hmm. so we're 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 reclaiming a support system of wholeness so that we can embody who we came here to be. Mm. And that's that's why Shamanjelic Healing mm -hmm. is, is you know, here. And there's virtual things like you were asking mm -hmm. about, well, how do you do that? There's guided visualizations, there's there's podcasts, there's sure. online, there's virtual coaching. Yep. And this is She has so many amazing <laughs> things. I'm serious. It's like every it's like a buffet of like drool, I'm drooling. I'm like, I want that one and that one and that one and that one. Yeah. And so that's it's, you it's know, cool. that's been part of the journey is to fill out the 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 resources so yes, a housewife in Kansas can get breath work or chakra balancing yeah. and we'll have a free gift for everybody watching that, yes. and listening as well. And that's gonna be a, a guided visualization into core healing of the inner child so that you can remember that. So we'll be sure that you have that and thank you for giving that and guys do it because that what i would say the most impacting part of my healing session with her yesterday was really tapping into who i was as a little girl at my core before both there were these positive positive things that i tried to you know quote unquote positive things i tried to like take on as my personality but aren't right and and also not being allowed to have negative expression of emotion mm -hmm. i was a i was an emotional little girl i remember being very happy, very loving, very, you know, very that way. And also like crying a lot and throwing tantrum, but all of that was shamed. And I love that you're restoring people back to like before you were shamed for being who you were naturally, because what I saw in that during that session was just this happy, beautiful, in touch with her emotions, smiling, free little girl, you know, and all of us need to be in touch with that because I've, I've worked with children and I've seen, I've watched them go from that to about 10, 11, 12 years old and it gets shut down. That's right. 
<laughs> shut down. They go from the happiest, like talk your ear off, little kid. They're dancing and they're you know out their chair and they're doing whatever and they've got their fun little toys and to silence, to drawn faces, to too afraid to talk in front of anyone, to you know just completely squashed down. And we go into adulthood like that, and we don't realize that that happened to us during that transition. And you're bringing people back to that playful inner child, which you're so yeah. right as you go on your soul's journey. That's, in my opinion, the only way to have happiness in it, to actually be in it. Right? Our, our inner child knows freedom and adventure. And, mm. I, you know, I remember I have this little picture of me as a little girl, and I'm literally wearing two different colored socks. <laughs> you know, my shoes are untied, my ponytails are crooked, and the smile is, and I'm dirty, mm. you know, like I'm all dirty and I'm on a swing set. And my smile is wrapping around my face. Mm -hmm. It's not, am I doing it right? right. And is, is everybody watching? Right. Am I going to get so-and-so's approval? Um, it, am, am I successful at this? It's mm. like I am playing in the way my soul knows how to play mm. and doing it, it. In, a, in a way that feels good to me, not mm. what feels right for you know, society's approval. And so we were talking right. about that yesterday of how we barter that authenticity for external validation right. for the tribe, the parents, the, the culture, um, our society's approval. Am I doing it right? Am I, am I a good girl? Am I a good boy? And this is about like f liberating that part of our inner child. And so I want to give you that gift of, so awesome. of, of that guided meditation to <laughs> kind of like that core healing Mm -hmm. And and then it's also about just finding those passions that, mm -hmm. that light us up, which mm -hmm. won't make sense for our mother or our father or our siblings right. or our programmed self. It won't make sense to follow the path of music or be a healer or be a writer or whatever it is. And um, it won't make sense. The programs in our mm -hmm. mind that says mm -hmm. this is the only version of success, mm -hmm. A, B, and C, mm -hmm. you have to choose from one of those options. Mm -hmm. It has to be chosen and executed in this little box. And it's like, ah! you know, we find ourselves in our 20s, even 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and on of like, the life is choked out of me. And, and just so many of my clients just come here just robotic, like that ghost-like look over their face of a, mm -hmm. living a soulless life. But on paper, mm -hmm. it's successful. I've got the, you know, the spouse and the kids and, and a career that on paper looks successful, but my soul is starving. Mm -hmm. And this is what this is about, is awakening to find those things that bring you great joy because that's where you're going to find the things where you're going to find your medicine mm -hmm. and your purpose and your path and if your inner child is oppressed and shunned in adult life by you not by the adults in your life as a child but but you're continuing that oppression now if we can't play you got to get back to work and you know that's that's irresponsible and it's just like wow the medicine of play and laughter and enjoying what you do and creating a life and a lifestyle that nourishes your soul is the new version of success today yeah i love thank right. you for sharing i love the image that's going to stick with me that image of the lopsided pigtails <laughs> and the mismatched socks and the beaming because you also you were more in the corporate you know corporate i went world. right into like new york city <laughs> with a bob and a suit and a briefcase and a little hustle 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 and where was that little girl with the beaming smile yeah. <clears throat> she was looking for success <laughs> you know and i learned a lot you yeah. know in my corporate i, yeah. I learned a lot I learned about money and I learned about customer service and I yeah. learned about budgeting and these are all valuable things and Love that. in that I was lining the pockets of the partners and you know my vision and goal was like oh get the corner office and then when I looked at the people who had the corner office I'm <laughs> like they're cheating on their spouses they're mean their their eyes are glossed over mm -hmm. their jaw is clenched and they drink heavily at night mm. and i'm like okay that's not my role model right you know they're not present for their families and yet they're successful on paper and and i traded that for this this is my yeah. office <laughs> and she's, you're wildly successful and in your in your purpose living in your purpose and that, i think that's the scarcity a lot of it is like wait 
I'm going to go from this big corporate America job to a healer role. Like, oh, well, I, whatever. I, and yeah. the scarcity kicks in. That's what happened to me anyway with going into entrepreneurship and health coaching was the scarcity was, well, like, what if I can't make money? That was a big... What that, that's I, a what, legitimate right? concern. You, you're going to need to be able to support yourself. Totally. But I'm way more successful now living in my purpose than I ever was, like, chasing a paycheck, you know, because now the, the energy of money follows the passion, right? Absolutely. It follows it. And so um, what would you say to somebody who's maybe like, what, I guess, what was that transition like for you? Did you move just to Arizona or like what happened? Um, <laughs> you know, it started with my own dark night of the soul. Mm, it started too. with that. Me too. It started <laughs> with being so lost, mm. um, having wandered off the path, following everybody else's dream for me mm -hmm. um, and following a, a, a vision of success that wasn't mine, that I really reached a point where I wasn't happy in the life that I'd created for myself. Mm. And what was spot on was, you know, my children like that was a yes. Mm -hmm. That was a yes. And I knew that I needed to become something better to be a better mother for them so that I wasn't passing on to them the yeah. same thing that was yep. that I was living a successful soulless life yeah. and and so in in that healing in that awakening it was like wow I need new tools I need to reinvent myself and a lot of core healing about the pain and the anger and the sadness and the grief that had never been dealt with as a child it was mm -hmm. it was like look I need to do my own healing work if I want my external life to change my internal landscape. I need to go, come and get to really know who I am mm -hmm. and look at my garden. Where are there weeds that I'm holding for my mother or father? Mm -hmm. Where does my inner child feel angry, abandoned, alone, um, oppressed? Where is my heart filled with walls of protection be from betrayal, from self-betrayal? Where do I feel like it's not safe to open? Where are the wounds that, that I created in other people's hearts and where are the wounds that others have created in my heart? And really just start weeding the garden. Let's go look at what's there. And it's so, I know that it's a, a place most of us avoid. Right. I don't want to go there or I don't have the tools or that's messy or that's ugly or I don't want to deal with it. And so sometimes we put that on pause. We push the snooze button until we're ready to say, you know what, I need to look. It's time. Mm -hmm. If I don't, it's, it's going to sabotage who I'm becoming. It's going to keep me from loving deeply another, another human being. And, uh, you know, it's going to keep me yeah. from a deep sacred union. Mm -hmm. It's going to pass on this unconsciousness to my children unless I do the healing, unless I learn new tools, unless I create a different way, then I'm going to pass it on to the next generation. If I don't shift this, if I don't do the inner work, I'm not ever going to find my soul's purpose. I'm never, not ever going to find joy. It'll be fleeting. Mm -hmm. I'll be chasing moments that go, and I won't be able to find sustainable happiness. And so this has become my passion and my purpose is I went through the dark night and like deep core healing, spiritual awakening in my journey. I was like, God, I wish I, I, wish I would have had more of that tools and support when I was going through it. Yep. And so that's what shamanjelic healing is about, is providing people with the tools to process and reclaim their power, core healing, spiritual awakening, and get back on their path. Because we need conscious leaders doing and giving their passionate work into the community. We need that. And so that's, that's my mission and purpose, is to help mm -hmm. people find theirs. Thanks. and remember who they are. Mm -hmm. And you know, and there's so many ways to do that. Mm -hmm. Whether there's virtual breath work now, mm -hmm. there's coming here to Sedona if you want private sessions, there's all, all virtual workshops, there's online courses, there's podcasts like this, there's coaching with people like you and I. And, and you know, really, you can't really say that there isn't support, that there aren't tools because I mean, if the Dalai Lama's on YouTube, for heaven's sakes. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I say you can change your whole life 
for free on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Really can. There's, there's so, so many there's resources. so much. Can you share a little more in depth what you actually offer both here in Sedona and yeah. online before we go? I'm going to make her list it off <laughs> because it's really cool. I, I like if you go to her website, which is shamangelichealing.com, right? So S H A M A N G E L I C. So sham, like a shaman, shamangelichealing.com is everything. But will you describe some of the cool things that you do both here and online? Yeah, you know, for for those of you that are called to Sedona to have an experience, you know, one of the one of the wonderful places to start is with the shamangelic healing journey, which mm -hmm. we did yesterday, which was it's my signature session. And, yeah. Beautiful, and we, beautiful. Aww. I cried. <laughs> <laughs> and it is like tears of sadness, tears of truth, and tears of joy. Mm -hmm. Like that's holy yeah. water. Mm -hmm. And so the, the tailored shamanjali healing journey is, is a wonderful place to start. That's where we get into what you're experiencing in, in your story and where the leaks are, where, where the truth is, where the disempowerment is. And then we go into the healing room for a tailored journey that will take us wherever it takes us. There's shamanjali breath work. Like that's another one of my passions and um, that can be done in one-on-one in -on -one sessions or virtually. Uh, and then of course there's private retreats. Sometimes people come here like, look, I'm going through a big change and I want to do uh, you know, multiple sessions in person on the land and, and tailored experiences to kind of look through relationships, career, core healing, spiritual awakening. Um, balancing the feminine and masculine, so a, a tailored private retreat. Lots of people bring groups here mm. where they're like, okay, we're bringing 10 ladies here and we're doing a That's spiritual, be me soon, spiritual so retreat. <laughs> and then, you know, tailoring workshops and breath work and uh, land journeys for group experiences. Today I'm doing a, a family, a mother and a father mm. and, a, and a son and a daughter. And so we're doing that. Yesterday to, you know, write a passage for a 12 year old. Uh, young uh, young man, mm. I, and I do sacred ceremonies for couples that are that are about to have a child, a birth blessing, or a wedding, or a renewal of vows. And then, of course, online there's courses on the chakras. There's courses on clear boundaries. Go get that one. <laughs> Everybody needs. She's looking straight at the camera. If you're not clear boundaries, into, everybody needs that one. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that's a that's a good one. There's one on balancing the feminine and masculine. There's courses on how to meditate, yeah. and there's virtual uh, virtual counseling. So that's online videos and an online support group. And then of course there's, you can add to that one-on-one -on -one coaching. So that's the Quantum Leap program. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be offered, and you know what? We'll offer you a special $100 off the Quantum oh, Leap program. Awesome. If you. you want a Quantum Leap into 2020, 2021, um, with support for that, that's a group coaching program. Beautiful, thank so you. So we'll give $100 Yay. off. I'll put this all in show notes, guys, both on YouTube yeah. and in, on, the, on the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is the opportunity and there's virtual workshop. Every month I'm doing a virtual Zoom workshop. Uh, the next one is on spiritual guidance. There's been, you know, one on ancestral healing. Those cool. will all become courses that you can take at any time. There's virtual breath work, so you can even be doing deep emotional Love release it. work virtually from the comfort of your own home. And so my, my passion is to keep filling out that offering list yeah. so that people based on their budget and based on what they need access to right now mm -hmm. can get what they need. Mm -hmm. um, and of Beautiful. course the podcast and, and there's always, which is the Shamanjali Healing Podcast, um, and, you know, on social media, on Ahata Ananda, YouTube, I'm on all of the Facebooks. I'm on all of the she socials. Is, she is. So I, I want to, I just want to say, you know, it's people like you that are facing your fears and that are stepping out of a smaller version of yourself that are also being called to the healing arts. And I know that this is going to continue because one of the things that you revealed is like, I'm really called, there's energy coming out of my hands. I'm really called to the healing arts. And that's one of my favorite offerings is the healing tools and modalities breathwork facilitator training, which yeah. I know I'll see yeah. you here for that. Yeah, I'm all about that. Yeah, so, and so yeah, Anahata, thank you, thank you, because um, what you shared with me yesterday was so beautiful that you were like, uh, somebody has to do it, somebody has to step up to the plate. There's all these people awakening, they need guidance, they need help, they need resources, they need tools, and I see that. Like, when I was going through your website, I was like, she is like, <laughs> 
freaking <laughs> kicking butt. Like, holy crap, this is a lot of work. That's a lot. Like, you are serving, serving, serving. And it's so beautiful. I know that you guys felt something today listening to this. I, I heard you on Aubrey's <laughs> podcast, and I was like, I love her. I resonated so deeply, and I know you're feeling that. So come partake of something so that you can have a little bit more tools in your tool belt. So yeah. thank you for offering that. The tool. podcast is a wonderful free way yeah. to get all, you know, the, the, the podcast is a wonderful free way to do that. Thank you for honoring. Yeah. It's been, you know, it's been a passion every year to birth a new workshop or yeah. online co counseling or a podcast yeah. and and to keep offering medicine in different forms and retreats we do a goddess awakening retreat at least once or twice a year or a soul awakening retreat and um, it's just been a blast to see how far it's been from new york mm -hmm. lining the pockets of the partners and doing it well mm -hmm. to here barefoot in yoga pants <laughs> with a beautiful soul sister with Sedona in the background n nourishing other souls and supporting their awakening because the prosperity and the abundance comes in all forms yes to love what you do with people that you love to do it with in an environment you mm -hmm. love to do it in like that's a new version of success mm. and so you can create your dreams you can manifest it into reality we have no doubt that if you're still listening here there's some medicine here and we're calling you forward to listen get still and feel your heart's greatest passion and then take courageous action to move forward one step at a time and both of us have resources that can help you do that so say yes <laughs> amen thank you so much and thank, thank you, you sister i appreciate respect what you're doing and i'm looking forward to adding more tools to your medicine bag thank you i can't mm -hmm. wait yeah. i can't wait guys make sure you go look in the show notes for links to all of that the discounts the free gift for your inner child work please just do it put it in your calendar go do it it's free oh it's been one of the most powerful things i've done is tap into my inner child so do that and we'll we'll link up everything below and again on a hot tub thank you thank you and thank you Mm-hmm. <laughs>